So good evening. This is uh, Tuesday, March 12th, and it is 6.36 p.m. We are having the Development and Government Relations meeting. Um, and just as a quick note, this evening it's our intention to go over the CDBG spreadsheet and proposal book. Um, and we are not likely to discuss items laid on the table as per our agenda. So I just wanted to start with that. Can I get a motion? Motion to take up, oops, sorry. No. Motion to take up item number one. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So motion to take up item one, minutes of the February 27th, 2024 meeting. Has everyone had a chance to take a quick look at those? Yes. Are we all right with accepting those? Yes. yes. All in favor? Aye. All right. Motion to take up item number two off the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, item number two, the, emotion, the motion is from Alicia Zoller, Administrator for the Office of Community Development. Um, we are taking up the CDBG spreadsheet and proposal book. So, Alicia, take it away. Thank you, counselors. Um, thank you for having me here tonight. Um, we are here to work together to develop your recommendations to the mayor for this year FY 2024's CDBG allocations. You've been provided um, with the spreadsheet and I'm gonna briefly, um, I have my screen to share, but I just, I, I just wanna briefly touch on um, some points. The first is that the spreadsheet is broken into three parts. We have our non-public service proposals and those are clearance and demolition, housing proposals, public facilities and infrastructure. And um, those total, the total of request is over 3.3 million. In this category, there is $799,595 to allocate. The next category of proposals is our public services. Those are broken into public services for youth, elderly handicapped, employment and education, and the general social services. HUD sets a capital, uh, statutory cap on how much the city can allocate towards the public services, and that's capped at 15%. So the estimated cap for this year would be $184,522 that can be spread for those public services. Finally, HUD caps the, the amount of funds that can be allocated towards administration and planning of activities associated with the Community Development Block Grant Program and the 20% cap that's estimated for this year's grant award is $246,029. At this point, you've probably seen that the FY 2024 federal budget, the budget that would have been set by the federal government last September, has not been finalized. And so we don't have our final award yet from HUD. We have um, estimates from our advocacy groups in Washington, D.C., that it will probably be level funded. So for the purposes of tonight, we're gonna to assume that it's level funded at a CDBG award of $1,230,146. Should that amount change, then there would just be a percentage change for each one of the projects that the mayor would allocate funding to. Um, I know we have some new counselors on the committee tonight. So briefly, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to provide another level of community review and response to the mayor on making those funding recommendations. So there are multiple levels and opportunities for both the public and the city council to weigh in on how the CDBG funds should be allocated. And we provided a spreadsheet to you last week that includes recommendations made by the Office for Community Development staff, by the Citizens Advisory Committee. The mayor issued his first round of recommendations. Tonight, you all will fill in the column um, that's labeled Development and Government Relations Committee. And then your recommendations will be sent to the full council for their review and then forwarded to the mayor. On March 27th, I will be issuing the draft annual plan for FY 2024 and we'll open a 30 day public comment period where the public has an opportunity to weigh in um, take a look at the grant application to HUD, and then weigh in on these preliminary recommendations for funding. Alicia, can, could you mention the, the form that we're going to be filling out as, as a group? Sure. If, um, if I may share my screen so that we can go over the spreadsheet, would that be helpful? Please. Thank you. 
Okay. So let me share screen. And also, Felicia, I'm having a, I'm sorry, Alicia, I'm having a hard time yep. um, finding the link to all the actual grant um, applications. Okay. If you could. Um, I have. I have the application book in front of me. If you have a particular question, um, I can go, I can leave and um, let me see if I can forward that to you, counselor. Okay, you bear yeah. with me just a second. Thank you. I was just looking at our previous emails and I couldn't find that. Is that the, okay. that's not the same as the proposal book, is it? It is, yep. Okay. Yep, that's the proposal book. All right, I may have found it. Okay. So I think I'm still screen sharing. Let me pull this up. Can you all see the spreadsheet with the yellow column? Yes. Okay, perfect. So you all, you all are going to be filling in um, your recommendations for each one of the proposals shown here on the left. And we will be um, doing this simultaneously. So as you make a funding recommendation, I will put a figure into the column. And then we will be able to do this um, basically live in that as you fill in a number, this total uh, here in line 30 is going to fill in and then it's going to deduct from this red number here. So you'll, you'll see exactly how many dollars you have left um, in that category. We find that, that this, this sort of live filling in makes it a little more, um, a little more efficient for you. So, Councilor Givner, how would you like to start? Do you want to review um, the CAC recommendations? I'm um, sure. I can do that. Okay. All right. So, thanks, Alicia. Um, I went to the um, Community Advisory Committee meeting where we went over the CDBG um, grant proposals. It's my understanding that that was the first look at these with input from the community. And um, we went over these and had some discussions. And what we came to, f to make decisions on was um, the first in housing for the Greater Springfield Habitat for Humanity. Um, there was discussion, sorry? Page one. There's, um, there's, they're very tiny, but there's actually a the, on them. The absolute first page, yes. Yeah. So we're. There's actually a number there. Mm -hmm. So, we had some discussion about how much the requested funding would actually cover, um, and came to the to feel that the that a full full um, financing of this would be the most helpful for a, the affordable home ownership through rehab program. So we allocated one hundred and fifty thousand seven hundred dollars to that first item. The office for community development, which is the second item there. Is also a homeowner rehab program called SHHIP for short. Um, they had requested nine hundred thousand dollars, and we, um, after some discussion, realized that there's a lot of different grants funded through this, and um, the grants are usually thirty thousand dollars or less, so people can apply for them. And with that in mind, we allocated $193,895 with the understanding is that they would cover that many grants. So, you know, divide that by $30,000, give or take. Um, for the Holyoke Fire Department, we fully funded the installation of smoke and um, carbon monoxide or, yeah, carbon detectors. Um, and there was some discussion about that as far as- Are others able to hear at home? Oh. Alicia Zoller shaking her head too. I think the audio is lost. Yeah, I, I I apologize. I thought I was muting myself. I might have muted everyone. No, All right, I, I think, think I can so. fix it. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> Let's start over, shall we? Can I ask you one quick question? Yes, ma'am. The top one, demolition of properties, you're not doing that? Oh, sorry, I skipped right over did it. You, did you also, <laughs> I would have. So we're going to be looking at this one yeah, yeah yeah only right now okay period yeah <laughs> i mean yeah we can do the mayors too 
This just helps me because I was there and those are my notes, but you're right. I can look at it that on this I one. I just don't want us to like, mm -hmm. want to keep everything balanced. No, you're right. No, you're right. Everybody. Hello, can anyone hear us? Yeah. There's an echo now. Because this is on unmute now. How do you do that? Should be good now, I think. Yeah, that one out Hello? there should remain muted. Okay. Yes, I just did that. Great. Um, before you, you uh, continue, just one second. Um, Alicia, when you go back to sharing your screen, could you just enlarge it a little bit so that it's a little easier for the public to see? Sure. I can give that a shot. Thanks a lot. Okay. Are we, do you want me to start sharing or do you want to? Yes. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit. Yeah, we should see it right there. Okay. Okay. I think it's a little dialed down in the bottom right. Yeah, it's on the bottom where it says allocations. Yeah, I'm not getting the full functionality on this. Oh. Well, you might magnifying glasses. Yeah, for whatever reason, I'm not getting full functionality here. I have a hard copy. No, but it's I'm not sure if that's part of the screen, the sharing or. You tried. Can you, all, can you all still see it? We can see it here. Um, okay. It's more for the public, but yeah. we can see it fine. Okay. Oh, Jeffrey, is that you playing with it? No, nope, that's that's your okay. handle the screen, yeah. Okay. Ooh. I apologize. I'm not sure why we're having um having these difficulties tonight. Okay. I think it's control. There we go. Is that a little better? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Okay. All right. All right. Take it from the top. Okay, I'm gonna start over. Ready? Yes, everyone ready? Yeah, ready. All right. Yep. Um, all right, so Office for Community Development, demolition of properties to be determined. Request was for 100,000. Um, Office of Community Development put that in a zero. Um, the Citizens Advisory Committee, which I attended, we also put that in at zero. Um, our mayor put that in as 88705. So, microphone, Patty. Friendly amendment to make it the 88705 requested by the mayor. How much? 88,705. <laughs> I didn't hear a second on either. Second. Up for um, any discussion? So I can only speak to the conversation in um, the Citizens Advisory Committee and um, what we talked about is their ability to find funding from other sources. Um, they're a separate entity, they do grant writing on their own. So when we looked at all these things, we just thought that there were other projects that may not find funding as easily, but I'm, I'm interested to hear what everyone else thinks. I had a question. Um, Councilor Sullivan. 
Carmen can go first. Councilor Ocasio. Um, the question is for Patty. Patty, um, why you wanted to lower it down to 80,000? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What was the reason why you wanted to lower it down to 80,000? No 80, specific 000? reason other than they asked for 100,000, the mayor went to 88, and I went to 80, but Mike just did it the same as the mayor, and we seconded it, so that's fine. Okay. But it was no other reason than just to, you know, lower it a little bit, okay. that's all. Thank you. Okay. So I would still uh, recommend as much, re regardless of all the grants and all the other avenues uh, to go about it, this city is still in dire need of an accelerated uh, plan of uh, blight remediation. And also uh, every year, every single year, we come across instances, again, emergencies where stuff has to be done right away. We, fires. Yep. So uh, we, we need never, ever in any year that I've been active on the council have I seen enough progress go into this. So it, I, I would have one question for Alicia. Mm -hmm. Please. Alicia's ready for your question. Yeah, oh, you, sir. okay. Alicia, if... OCD requested 100, but then recommended zero. How, how does, what happened there? Um, so we, we submit our proposals at the same time that other folks are submitting proposals. So I always like to have a, a benchmark for demolition, but then when we saw the other proposals that came in, um, you know, when, once we look at the full breadth of them, then we recommended not funding. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Yeah. I also wanted to add there, yeah, having been on like the um, Holyoke Local Cultural Council, when we read grants, we 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 have a sort of unwritten rule that we never fully fund anything because there's only um, so much funding and we can't fully fund everything and give everyone some money. So I know that's a totally different type of um, committee, um, but we definitely look at we, we tend to look through the entire group of grants first and try to figure out, you know, like Councillor Sullivan said, what does the city need, what what would we want to fund, and what, what is the funding available. And since there's limited funding, obviously, ideally, we would give everyone full funding because all these things benefit the city. Um, so we have to keep in mind what's available as we do the funding. Um, Councillor Anderson Burgos. My my approach is going to be just slightly different. Um, I look at how important. So, if we're looking at de demolition, you know, we're looking at properties that could easily collapse. Now we're looking at people possibly getting hurt, killed, um, the the city being sued for such causes, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to be very diligent about how we're going to choose to spend this money. We have to spend it wisely and effectively. So when I think about how we're going to spend this money, I think about what's most threatening to our community. Right. Well, that's reasonable. Yeah. Councilor Ocasio? Also including the homeless, because the homeless mm -hmm. do be staying in these buildings, and they're very dangerous for them. So. Mm -hmm. All right. I think these are all really good points. Did anyone else have a comment, question? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so on the motion to fully fund um, I, or fully I think allocate. We can do them all and then just one package. Okay, that's right? fine. Yeah. Because we can then revisit them too if we want to mm -hmm. change something. Okay, so we'll leave that one at. As the DGNR committee, I'm just going to put in here 88705 for now. Um, all right, so moving along to the housing section. For Greater Springfield Habitat for Humanity, um, the affordable home ownership through rehab at 15700 um, OCD or Office of Community Development put that in as 15100 The Citizens Advisory Count Committee put it in as 15700 with full funding. Um, it looks like the mayor put that in as zero. Um, there was a lot of discussion about this in that in uh, the CAC committee and there was mixed feelings you know partially people felt like there's not necessarily enough 
housing created through this. Um, so although it's a good idea to create more housing, creating you know, two single family houses or four single family houses doesn't really solve our issues. And 150,700, I think, was enough for like one house, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that um, so I think that was part of the discussion that we did vote on it and it did, you know, did decide on this full funding. But I'd be interested in um, how the committee feels about this. Councilor Sullivan. Thank you. Uh, so again, I uh, question uh, for Alicia. Um, Alicia, how many um, homeowners participated in the uh, SHIP program uh, last year? So um, in terms of the Greater Springfield Habitat for Humanity, I believe their proposal calls for the rehab of two single family houses um, and then for sale to owner occupants. The SHIP program, um, as we're calling it, because we, we just needed an acronym for this, is going to be new. Um, it is uh, similar to what One Holyoke did through the Neighborhood Improvement Program. In this case, we're um, asking for a program that funds homeowner rehab at a higher level than the previous Neighborhood Improvement Program. And on average, we've been able to probably do between 10 and 15 um, home rehabs a year. It fluctuates through COVID. It was kind of it was kind of crazy. Um, in this case, um, we're hoping to be able to help 30 homeowners. Um, you know, our proposal was for 30 homeowners at $30,000 a piece. Right. We have a waiting list of homeowners in the city who are in really dire circumstances in terms of their owner occupied housing conditions. We have a number of folks where their homeowners insurance is being canceled. Um, we have folks that are aging or trying to age in place in homes where they have the equity, but they don't have the income um, to take on additional debt. We have a much older housing stock um, that is deteriorating and crumbling, particularly our, our um, owner occupants. And so that's what our intent was um, with our proposal for the homeowner rehab program. The Springfield Habitat for Humanity is the creation of homeownership opportunities through rehab of currently vacant, blighted single family homes. The OCD proposal for homeowner rehab is to provide grants to existing homeowners to address things like um, leaking roofs. Uh, no, we, we're seeing more and more cases of no heat, no hot water, uh, poor electrical systems, that sort of thing. So there is a bit of a difference between between those two proposals. Okay, uh, thank you. So um, for the committee, um, the the point I'm seeing here, what I, what's driving me on this is, you've you've got uh, these Habitat for Humanity that would uh, uh, affect uh, two families. You've, you've got a right. bigger program that could affect thirty or more families. It already has a, a waiting list, um, and uh, to do one or two houses really doesn't move the needle at all. Mm -hmm. um, I would, you know, propose uh, zero on the uh, Habitat for Humanity uh, and increasing to, uh, oh, uh, we got 200, three, 300, uh, shipped to 350,000. Hmm. Thank you. That sounds really good. Um, yeah, so can we get those numbers again, Mike? So I would go, I, I would, my motion would be zero, zero for Habitat for Humanity okay. and 350 for uh, the SHIP program. The SHIP program. Thank you, Counselor. Um, I have to agree that, you know, and I, I definitely, um, in the Citizens Advisory Committee, uh, meeting made a case for homeowners in Holyoke, especially um, owner occupied places, even multi you know multi families that are owner occupied because they're actually part of the solution in our community. You know they're not like out of town <laughs> um, absentee landlords who are creating part of the issue. So I think that's a great idea. And so so we're going to pencil in the three fifty. Well, I made a motion. I, we didn't get a second. Oh, we got a second. So we did. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. I think it's a great idea. All right. Oh, no. Yeah, we're not yeah. we're not voting. All right, Holyoke Fire Department. I make a motion that we keep it up to fifty five thousand. I'd second that. 
Um, any discussion? It's certainly an important thing for smoke detectors and carbon yeah. monoxide. So, I agree. absolutely. And um, again, with personal experience with this, you know they are great. They come out to homes. They walk through your whole house. They replace all the fire detectors. They put in, you know, the dual fire carbon detectors. It's a free program for Holyoke residents and homeowners, and I think it's an excellent one that needs to be funded. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Department of Public Works. Um, sidewalks and ADA ramps. Uh, there was a there was some talk in committee about um, partial funding of this and how that wouldn't really uh, create all the the you know create all the sidewalk and ADA ramp updates that we would need throughout the city. Um, so yeah, up for discussion. Do we have a number on how many ADA ramps are necessary or needed? Um, Alicia? I, I don't have a number. Okay. Um, my apologies. I don't have a number on that. No problem. Well, the request was for 600000 and so I'm not sure if that was to cover the entire city, but if we pull up the grant, it may say something about this. As, yeah. as a reminder, um, for CDBG-funded sidewalks and ADA ramps, um, they're mm -hmm. typically installed in low in order to be eligible under the HUD regulations are installed in low and moderate income primarily residential neighborhoods okay. um, and we talked in the CAC meeting that that area that geographic area that has low and moderate income neighborhoods is actually growing in the city of Holyoke um, so we're able to do sidewalks um, and ADA ramps in a greater number of areas so I Councillor Sullivan yeah so i the there's a few other i i think places we have quite a few other um funds available the um uh, cannabis the mitigation funds that target these neighborhoods um i i think yeah there's specific stipulations though yeah yeah uh, that they have to follow yeah the, do these qualify for some of those funds we have a grant writer now that's doing a tremendous job at the DPW. Are you um, referring to the impact fee? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are specific things you can use it for, and it's generally in the general area of where these shops go up in specifically. Yeah, so, so yeah, the impact fees have to, have to be in direct correlation with the business itself. So it, even if there is an impact, it has to be right there as part of something that the business will also um, benefit from. So those fees have been, it's my understanding that it's been really hard to uh, navigate what those fees can actually be used for because we've wanted to redo sidewalks and, and walking areas in South Holyoke and in the, in the traffic, areas where there's the most traffic cannabis is, business. And traffic improvement is able to, yeah. as well. Um, I had a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, the uh, marijuana establishments, um, when they first started coming here, I think I understood it right. Like, they were going to contribute to doing the sidewalks and whatever was needed in the neighborhood. But I, in South Holyoke, I haven't seen anything done mm -hmm. but the um, sidewalk at Boston Butt. Like, that was a big thing. Like. They gave him the money, right, to help fix South Holyoke, the area, right? Okay, mm -hmm. but then there was a big commotion about that. They wanted their sidewalks, the, the, the area where they at, Boston, but to get fixed by the sidewalk. So they quick did that, but forgot about everything else. So. I'm not understanding why would they, if they're going to get money to get fixed sidewalks and then take money, ask for money to fix their sidewalk in this section, I mean, I don't think. Because it directly affects their business. So they're just doing the sidewalks in front of their business. That's all they have to do, they're, unfortunately. Yeah, the stipulations around yeah. the, the impact fee is, and the city can get sued if we don't you act, allocate those monies correctly, if we don't use that money right. 
And so, so there's been confusion back and forth. And so the impact fee, um, what I recall was what kind of impact did your business bring to this general area of the city where you exist? That's what the impact fee entails, is what, what you would be using that money for. So if it's broken down sidewalks because of usage or whatever, like you have to clean up that area. That's what I remember from it. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It has to directly affect the business. So well, it's an improvement to the neighborhood I, at the I business. Wanna, I, yeah. yeah, so the money comes to the city, but it's not up to the business to fix it. Right. Keep that in mind. It's us. Like we have to allocate that money. We have to. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? We're talking about uh, sidewalks and ADA ramps as requested. Six hundred thousand from the DPW. It's um, understood that if they receive less funding, they'll just do less projects. So. Well, I, myself, given the choice that I see here, uh, really between some more sidewalk repair and yes. ADA ramps in Springdale Park. Uh, I, I would go with the Springdale Park would hmm. in a heartbeat. I, I, I'm i more interested in, in the sidewalks repairs just because I've seen in front of my house and I believe my house is not, the front of my house doesn't qualify, but the front of my house, one of the sidewalks lifts up, and I've seen children, I've seen moms, I've seen people in wheel uh, wheelchairs having issues going over mm -hmm. that. So we need to fix a lot of our sidewalks. Absolutely, I don't yeah. think I don't think it's anything on this. Issue. Yeah. Uh, it absolutely is. elderly, you name it. And there's nothing on this list that's not important. So um, no, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, I, I I think safety first. I always think safety. Councilor Devine. Yeah, um, Alicia, um, Chapter 90 money, does that go anywhere towards sidewalks or things like this? I believe Chapter 90 is used by DPW for sidewalks, um, particularly outside the CDBG eligible neighborhoods. Okay, so um, community development is for the, the lower wards, say one and two, possibly four, and then all the rest is for anywhere in the city, the Correct. Chapter 90 money. Okay. Chapter 90 money, for people that might not understand State. it, you know, I think, mm -hmm. is, I believe, when people get ticketed for speeding, things like that, portion of that money goes to the city, portion may go to the state police, whoever tickets you, that type of thing. But I, I, I sort of remembered that it was used for sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Chapter 90, huh? Ro Ticketing Ro for speeding in Holyoke? Hmm. That would well, be interesting to see. You got you got 91, <laughs> yeah, 291, yeah. But um, but. So, um, we so will we, have money coming from Chapter 90 for sidewalks. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Okay, so... Well, what, hold on, hold on. Do you, do you, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't, you know, do, do we have Attorney Bissonnette on the line still? Um, looks like we do. Uh, Attorney Bissonnette, back, back to the impact fee. Every single um, manufacturing facility and dispensary is located in wards one and two. Right. And I think, I don't know what, we've got 30 host city agreements. Is there, are we at risk if, if we're doing stuff in these wards and it happens to be a uh, hundred yards or a quarter mile away from any particular f facility? Mm -hmm. um, or is it, because it, it's, you know, to me when somebody says neighborhood, um, it, it doesn't have to be a sidewalk right in front of the place. Right. It, could, it could be down the street. Right. So are, are we really uh, being overly cautious here, or where do we stand on this? Hey, Councilor. Good question, Councilor Sullivan. The, um, the answer is yes, we have been overly cautious, and it turns out we were right to be uh, just that cautious about the expenditures and the impact fees. Impact fees have pretty much been, uh, if not eliminated, uh, they've become very, very difficult to first identify as being related, as the chair said, directly to the business affected. That that amount is charged only to that business, not on a citywide basis. You can no longer use a percentage 
of sales or receipts as a basis. So the 3% uh, for uh, growers and the 1% for retail, Pollo has been charging, uh, is no longer available. Uh, the new process would be, we basically identify the service, uh, the cost, send the business a bill, they have the right to dispute it or they may pay it, but uh, they're under no obligation to pay it. They can ask for the state to determine whether or not it is actually a valid bill. Uh, this was a long time coming, but it has been something argued for uh, by the Retail Association since the beginning. Uh, we've been cautious with it. Our staff is now negotiating with uh, the various entities that are licensed and have been paying these fees, and we hope to have some updates for the council shortly. Okay. Hope that answers your question, Councilor. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Attorney Bissonette, while Sir? I have you, while I have your attention, I just want to ask you a question. So, as as we know, this impact fee, right? It's a constant flow of funds coming from the businesses, right? Yeah. So this money is going to keep going, keep going. It's not? It stops? I think that's the problem. Department of Public Works or Cannabis? We're still talking about ADA sidewalks and trying to figure out how yeah. the cannabis okay. industry can pay for them. Okay. I want to... <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, I just want to... I want to figure out if... The, I think the program's ended. It does have yeah. an ending. Counselor, I mean, uh, Attorney Bissonette, is it, it's my understanding that these funds will stop or have stopped coming in regularly. Is that correct or incorrect? That is correct. No okay. one is voluntary. That, then that would answer my question. I just wanted yeah. to make sure that. If they were going to keep coming in, we would have there more and to work and with. And we could yeah. only do so much with it, yeah. then what are we going to do with the rest of the money? Yeah, we're not getting it. That's what I wanted to make sure. Okay. I had a question. Councilor Ocasio. Um, the, this um, money here uh, include also the, the light in Springdale? In, oh, we're not at the Springdale, okay, if you wouldn't mind holding that question. Um, all right, so we're still talking about uh, sidewalks and ADA ramps. Um, the Office of Community Development um, proposed 100000 for the to go towards the $600,000 request from the DPW. Um, Citizens Advisory Committee requested, I mean, proposed 400000 because they felt like um, sidewalks and ADA ramps are incredibly important. I mean, I've seen plenty of motorized wheelchairs on the streets because the sidewalks are practically unusable in a lot of our neighborhoods. So I, I tend to agree that this is really important. Um, on the flip of that, I also understand that we have a new grant writer at the DPW who, who will be able to look for and Excellent. apply for funds specifically for something like this. So I have a lot of confidence that um, if we did decide not to fund this or to fund, to fund it partially that they're they're working hard to find funds for these things. And that's something new for us as a council to get used to, that our departments actually have grant writers. Um, but I think it's just amazing. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing all the good that comes yeah, from that. I agree. So, um, so do we have a number? What is the will of this body? I'm... I'm if I could, I'm thinking of, you know, if the OCD did a hundred thousand and CAC did four hundred thousand. Again, it's whatever we do, the mayor is the final say so on everything. So mm -hmm. we, I'm thinking, do a three hundred thousand. But again, or I'm in between three hundred thousand and zero. To be honest with well, you. and also keep in mind that um, do you think, the total that we can give out in this area is seven ninety nine five nine five. So. It's so going to run can. out. That 300 is almost half of that. Yeah. Then I would propose a zero. Uh, I would put. I would second that. Go ahead. Zero? Yep. All right. Let's do zero for now. All right. So we're looking at Springdale Park now. Um, they've been trying to get this done for a long time. So my uh, what I came out of the... Citizens Advisory Committee meeting with was, um, yeah, they voted zero. Um, the discussion was around the fact that um, if 
if the Parks and Rec Department didn't get the full funding, they wouldn't be able to do to complete this project. So partial funding does not work for this. So it's either 400 or nothing. So that's a, a decision that we really need to take seriously. Oh, and we only have up to... It's about 800000 total. Um, and so when you look at this, and they, need, they basically need half of the funding available to fund to get Springdale Start. Park finally done, to get the improvements completed finally. I just want to keep saying finally. And they said zero. Well, C -C. Um, CAC said zero. Um, OCD said OCD zero. OCD said zero. And our mayor said 400. He would like to fully fund it, so. I'd like to fully fund it myself. I, I would also. I would like to remind everybody that that's a Frederick Law Olmsted. Yeah, park. no, I, I also uh, the pool that was once there. I was, when I the was pool a kid, that I was, was once I, there. Yeah, there was a pool. Aww. Yep, there was. A and that turned into a skating rink when it, the, the winter. winter. Yep, <laughs> and it, to this day, it's still, I think, one of the most widely used. Uh, yeah, public yeah. parks we have. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's on Main Street. It's like yep, it's a corridor. So I I see the improvement, the mean, the need for this investment. Did I hear it fully funding from the body? Yes. Yep. Yes. All right. Next, Lighthouse School. Um, they've requested yes. 100. Sorry, Alicia. If I may, um, if I may, you, I, I think I heard fully fund this. Mm -hmm. Not fully fund. That's not fully. And you're um, at 400. You're now in a you're now in a deficit of um, ninety four thousand dollars. Okay, great. <laughs> So. Thank you, Alicia. Um, I'm okay with going through this and then going back to the beginning. Yeah. If that's okay with that's fine. everyone here. All right. Because hindsight is 2020. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're looking at Lighthouse School, and they um, just bought a building. They're they're moving into a new space, and they would like to do a kitchen renovation uh, in that building. Um, they've requested a hundred thousand dollars. OCD and CAC and the mayor said zero on this. Um, I'd propose zero also. Second. Um, any discussion on this? All right. Um, I would just like to add that uh, I have strong feelings about private schools and I'm learning more about Lighthouse. They have really great programs, so maybe this is just not the year for them to get funding. That's what I was thinking, yeah. yeah. Um, so the next one is Holyoke Public Schools for inclusive playgrounds at McMahon and Morgan. Um, they have requested 788,000. Um, OCD and CAC put it in at zero. The mayor has requested 310,890. So it looks like his priorities for this grant cycle are the parks. Um, I'm just gonna pull it up here, but any discussion on this one? Councilor Ocasio? Okay, um, I volunteer and I live right across the street from Morgan School. Mm -hmm. they, they, um, pl they playground is literally falling apart, like in pieces, because I've been there and I've seen it. And we, they also put a, a like a yellow tape around the area because the, the, the the black part that the kids cross on one side from thing to the other, it's mm. broken. that's it's broken. So they put a caution tape, but the kids still play in it. So we have to like, we constantly gotta be watching them so they won't get hurt. That that playground needs like help ASAP. It's horrible. It's very dangerous. I mean. Keyword hurt. Dangerous. Very, dangerous. Yeah, dangerous. Wow. I recommend 310 at 890, what the mayor recommended. I'm curious so, to see what happens if we, with partial funding. So that's what I'm trying to. Well, well remember, I, we're going to go back and, and discuss. Right, yeah. but the grant will tell us what, what they need. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Councillor Sullivan. Thanks. Um, also, the, you know, this, the schools, you know, remain under state receivership. Mm. Um, they have a budget of. Hundred fifty million dollars. Something. I mean, it's significant. Significant. So uh, you know, um, they they should be doing this stuff in their normal budget. And uh, why something 
in their budget was allowed to deteriorate, like Councilor Ocasio says. Um, I don't get it, but um, I think that's a good point. I didn't know that, but I will be asking the questions. Yeah. And I think I think you know for the while we debate whether the city or the the since it's in you know receivership the state should pay for it kids are getting hurt and that's my concern like i don't want to sit here and argue not that we're arguing but like i don't want to sit here and debate the right who should pay when some child is liable to get hurt because the negligence on the property yeah it's literally like that part right there is like there's got yeah the kids are gonna get hurt I think there's got to be some kind of system where we hold them accountable before it gets to this part before it gets to this May mm -hmm. where we're sitting here discussing oh it needs to get fixed then you should we should be talking to them we should have someone visiting these schools someone from the city visiting the schools making sure that they're properly maintaining that that property so I would ask um, Alicia because I can't I can't seem to pull up on the grant area on the grant proposals. Um, what partial funding would do for this project is my question. Okay, let me take a quick peek. Um, if anybody is following along, it should be on page sixty of the proposal book. Sixty. I don't have the book. Yes. No, so um, book. yeah, that's right. <laughs> Partial, um, the request is for 788000 and that was split between um, Morgan and McMahon. The Morgan School Grant, the Morgan School Grant, um, in order to do Morgan School, the estimates that the school department has received um, for Morgan School is $477,330. So three ten dollars is for McMahon, and Morgan needs four seventy seven three thirty. dollars Gotcha. And so McMahon and is in worse shape. So McMahon, um, McMahon only needs three ten, and Morgan needs four seventy seven and change. Yeah. Now, when we're talking about playgrounds and play structures, um, there is no such thing as partial funding. So, if you, for instance, funded that at a hundred thousand, the school might, for instance, get two slides. Um, the numbers that the school department submitted were based on actual estimates that they had received for what was needed at these locations. So again, for Morgan School, it's $477,330. And for McMahon School, it's $310,000. So it looks like from the mayor's allocation, he was probably thinking McMahon School. All right. Morgan, well, Morgan's going to need four seventy seven. dollars Gotcha. And, and just like with Springdale, um, partial funding doesn't cut it. You got to fund the full thing. Partial, partial funding um, for CDBG doesn't cut it because, like I said, they apparently the school department has picked out what it is that, that they want for that location. And um, a partial funding would, would not do it. Thank you, Alicia. Um, Counselor Megan McGrath-Smith is online and has a question or a comment. <laughs> So yes, thank you for calling me. I appreciate that. Um, so one of the pieces around Morgan, as I'm understanding it, is that in the way that we rezoned and shifted populations, the Morgan School Playground, which is very old, I think it's over 20 years old at this point, is not appropriate for a huge section of their school population because it's not built for pre-K students, nor is it handicap accessible, and they now have a large ABL program there. So mm -hmm. I was wondering, um, looking through the book, it, of course, that playground is more expensive than the McMahon playground. And my thought was that it had to do with those additional features that had to be built in there to be appropriate for their school populations. Thanks for that. Thank you. Councilor Ocasio. OK, so um, since it's not going to be funded, so where we stand, Morgan School stand, as far as the children's safety, because the, the, the structure is falling apart, like literally is falling apart. So something has to give to help Morgan School out because if a kid get hurt there, somebody gonna get sued. Mm. You know, this, this is how serious it is. 
Go down to Morgan School Playground and see for yourself exactly what I'm talking about. And I see it every single day because I'm there every single day with the kids. Mm. And I'm worried. Thank you, Counselor. So what's the will of this body? Well, I mean, it doesn't make sense to partially fund it. Well, it's, it was, yeah, but fully funding is 788 and that's like all the money. Right, but the mayor did funded th- one and funded not the other, which does not make sense. It sounds sense, like right? Morgan is the is very dangerous. I haven't seen McMahon, I, so. But according, at least what I thought I heard, uh, Alicia Zoller state was that you can't just break it up. It needs to be fully funded. You can break it up in two. You can fund Morgan or McMahon or both with 788, but at 310890 proposed by the mayor basically that. funds McMahon. That, that's correct, Counselor. It's two schools. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, so this 310 number funds McMahon, yep. but, but uh, Counselor Ocasio feels like Morgan is the more dangerous, and Counselor Megan McGrath-Smith, from what I understand, what she just said is that um, McMahon has a new program with students who require um, mobility uh, access. So, um, I understand that the other school needs that, you know, for the um, handicap and, and kids. They, they, um, but at least for now, Morgan School need, that, that playground needs to be fixed somehow because if not. Kids are gonna get hurt. You guys gonna mark my words when I say they're gonna get hurt. So, okay. Thank you, Counselor. Um, Counselor McGrath Smith. Uh, just a point of order. The school I was referring to was Morgan. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. All right. So it Morgan sounds like. Morgan has a new program, and Morgan has the dangerous playground. Do we know anything about McMahon? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen a playground in a long time. Once again, I can't believe they're putting in a new, you know, here we go, putting in a new program. <laughs> Morgan School, that's going to have all these special needs, and, and there's, no and there's nothing in the budget. They're, they're looking to... CDBG for funding outside of a program that was put together uh, hmm. by the state. Great. All right. What is what are we thinking, y'all? I, if I could, I'm thinking. I mean, I agree. If it, I haven't seen either playground, so I don't know if one is more dangerous than the other, or one is needed because of the new program that's going to be at Morgan. I guess. Um, we have um, a joint school city council. Yep. Maybe that's where we need to take this up at and have them go to the playgrounds, check it out, get some more information. I mean, we have to vote on this tonight anyways, but get some more information and find out what's going on with these schools, you know, and how dire of a need is it to get this funding or some kind of funding from the schools to, to get this done. But if we don't, if we can't see what we're supposed to be seeing, how can we put a number on it? Let that that um, school committee and city council give a report on both of those um, um, playgrounds. Yeah, and include Sullivan. Yeah. So I'm looking at an Ariel and McMahon. They have a small playground with a sand pit. It looks like it doesn't look dangerous. Um, I would, I would personally, with the idea that, um, Morgan School is dangerous, I, I don't really, you know, ha- not having a, a, a great playground is one thing, but having a playground that the kids can't use without getting hurt, I think, would be my priority. That's um, what we have to find out. Yeah. Um, I think Alicia was about to say something, Alicia. I was. I just. I want to note that the school department, in their application, um, noted that the current playgrounds are outdated and in need of replacement. Um, and then they go on to say that the two school buildings selected for the application 
were selected because their outdoor multi-use spaces have antiquated playgrounds with broken equipment that is unsafe for children. Okay, good to know. Good, we know that now. Do we know the population of the two st schools individually? Like the um, student population? Mm -hmm. I don't have the student population individually. The application talks about 500 children would benefit, um, mm -hmm. but it looks like that's be that's 500 is based on the combined uh, numbers. Wow. Okay. Thank you. I'm looking just at aerials of the two schools. Um, Morgan is in three buildings with a much larger playground that apparently is dangerous, and McMahon is in one building with a dinky playground but they also have a uh, baseball diamond a soccer field plenty of running around room I don't know I'm not trying to be difficult here but it looks like the 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 flats or the the South Holyoke uh, school has a lot more students in a lot more ground area so their playground might be a little more important to the students there but who am I I don't have kids so what am I talking about well, it's the will of the body then. I would, Somebody made well, a motion. There was a know. motion made for the 310 890. If that can either stay the same and it was seconded, or it can be withdrawn and another figure put in there. The, the figure for. Well, the di would we want to put in the Morgan difference for Morgan instead? Morgan, yeah, what was four Morgan? 477 330. 477 330. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Numbers. Um, do we want to propose that for Morgan well, instead? I think we, gotta, we have to take out the 310 first. That would be that would be the difference. The 477 330 oh, from 788. See, we already put in the 310. Okay. And it was seconded. I see. So I, see. I think we need to withdraw that. that. Amend and, and put it to yeah. Or amend. Amend it. Yeah. yeah. So amend the proposal is 477. 330 instead? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's see where it goes. We're way over budget, y'all. <laughs> Let's keep going. Madam Chair. Oh. Welcome, Councilor Rivera. Yeah, my hand was raised. I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, no worries. Uh, but if you could recognize, I saw Meg's hand was raised too, and she put it down. So I don't know if you want to uh, go with her first or me. I don't know. Uh, Meg spoke twice, so I think you have the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, so I, again, I just got here. I'm sorry. I was with my kids at, uh, buying them some stuff for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Uh, so I, I, I'm sorry I'm late. I walked in on this conversation uh, with Matt, the McMahon and Morgan piece. And you guys do how, whatever you want to do or however you want to do it. I just kind of want to speak a little bit to the McMahon Park and with, with regards to the Morgan School thing. Um, I think that both projects are both worthy. Um, um, the only thing, and normally I'm more in favor for things that are happening downtown, especially with CDBG money, but for McMahon School, um, the park that they have actually has not been improved with over 10 to 15 years, I believe. Um, and what they have is not really a park. Um, they have a small little park. It's true what you said. They do have uh, the softball diamond and the soccer diamond. But when it rains and in the rainy season, they can't play on that because it gets muddy and it gets like all swampy and ish. Um, so, and I know this from me going to the school when I was a little kid. <laughs> the only thing you have is the blacktop and somewhat the little park that they have across in the grass, but they don't necessarily use that as much because the a, a lot of the um, the, the, the columpios in Spanish, but uh, the swing Swings. sets and stuff, they're over time, they're, they're, they're old school, uh, for lack of better terms, right? Um, the, the issue with McMahon School is that normally it doesn't fall under CDBG funding because of the location of where it's at and the community of where it's at, um, but because of the student body that, are po that populates McMahon School, which is almost 80 to 90 percent Latino, in the wards that are, I believe, three and four mostly. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, some of six too. Um, no, three is actually done in here. So it would be four, five, and six-ish. I'm not exactly how it's zoned out, but I do know that the, that where they're pulling from is the student body of, of, of kids, parents that fall under the AMI, that fall under the guideline to, to 
for CDBG to qualify for the particular school. So if the school was just applying on its own, just for the school, it would not qualify, but it's using the student body and, and the makeup of the student body to be able to apply for the resources to build out for this school. Um, just trying to break that down um, for some context. Um, I know that Morgan School is applying for something too. I think both projects are worthy. I think they should both be funded, um, but it, from like background context, Morgan or the flats in South Holyoke always get new parks all the time because CDBG, um, it qualifies there. And in the higher communities and in, in the higher wards, more or less six, seven and five, CDBG doesn't really qualify as much. So the times that you can make it fit so that the students can actually receive the services that they need. Um, that's the reason I, I see the application forward um, and I kind of support it. Um, but again, you guys can do what you guys need to do. You guys are on the committee. I just wanted to add some background context on it. Thank you, and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Sorry. Councilor Sullivan. So I, I'd make one final comment and observation here. Um, I, I, don't, I don't believe either of, of these, you know, should be coming out of CDBG. These should be coming out of the school department budget. Mm. And... Furthermore, they should have never, the school department should never have allowed them to deteriorate to this point. Yes. So to lay this whole thing now, like uh, um, C, on CDBG to fix these two parks, I, I just, uh, if we're going to do, if we're, if we're going to go that route, we got to do the whole 788000 mm. and forget all about demolition of properties, affordable home ownership, carbon monoxide, everything else, mm. or dump the whole thing back where it belongs and make this a, a, an issue for the council going forward with our joint committee as to why it's gotten to this state that it comes to yep, something like this. Uh, Councilor Rivera? Yes, uh, thank you again, Madam Chair. And good point, Councilor Sullivan. Um, the problem I think that lies there is that there's a little bit of responsibility to be shared on both ends. Um, yes, the school department should be maintaining to a certain extent, but uh, the responsibility lies on both the city and the school department. As a former Parks and Recs commissioner, um, we manage the parks actually as a city. Um, so because we manage the parks as a city, we collect the fees on the, on the parks as a city, not the school department. So there is a, a confusion as to who is actually responsible to the maintenance of that. And because of that confusion, nobody's maintaining any of the parks that are attached to the to, to the schools. And the parks and recs are doing what they can yeah. to a certain extent, and the school department is doing what they can to a certain extent. But there, it's, it's good that you bring up that point, uh, Councilor Sullivan, because for us to be able to define who actually is in charge of the parks and maintaining the parks would make perfect sense. I've spoken to the superintendent slash retriever about it, and he said, if you let me know that I'm maintaining the parks, then let me collect the fees and I will do the schedules and I will manage all the parks that are attached to the schools. But it, there is there is a, 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 a line where the, that, that blurs the division of parks and the school department. And I think that, that blur-ish line has allowed for people to fall back and not actually have to maintain the parks. Um, so that's a good point that you brought up, Councilor Sullivan. Thank you for that. Councilor Rivera, since I know you work for the schools and the Parks Department, um, when you say worked, when you say collect fees, who's collecting fees from who for what? So the Parks Department collects the fees for the rental of the parks. So, for example, if someone rents, ah. uh, so they don't cut, they don't contact the school for that. They contact no. the Parks Department. No. Yeah. Okay. No. They want to use the football field at Holyoke High School, you got to call the Parks Department. The yeah. Parks Department collects the fees. The Parks yeah. Department is the one that manages the account for that because it has its own separate account that collects fees. And that's all managed by the Parks Department. So because of that, the school department falls back in a sense where it's like, okay, you're collecting the fees. So where are the fees that you guys are collecting going towards? Like, if that's the case, then let us, man. Like, there, there is everyone's passing the buck in a sense, right? So one department will say that it's not our responsibility, the other department will say that it's not ours, or one will say that's ours and it's ours. So I think the best bet to move forward with Councillor Sullivan's point with who is actually maintaining the park is to literally outline who is whose responsibility it is 
and kind of hash all that out. Because during my time on the Parks and Recs, and even now as my last almost two and a half years as a counselor, it still has not been figured out and no one has approached it um, mm -hmm. to try to like figure out that nuance between uh, yeah, city owned and school owned properties. Cause ultimately they're all city owned regardless, whether it's the school right. managing it, the city. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sullivan. Uh, through the chair to Councillor Rivera. So Morgan School is just a playground, not a park, right? It's just a playground. It's just a playground. And I can't remember anybody paying any fees or renting it for any purpose. No, I've been there 48 years. It's not holy. Am I wrong in that? You're right about that. You are correct. You are correct. I'm only referring to the parks that, that are actually, um, like Kelly School has the outdoor park, McMahon, Dunahue School. I'm sorry, I got babies going crazy. <laughs> Dunahue School. It's a majority of the schools. Ian White has one. Sullivan School has one. A majority of the schools share these responsibilities. So for Morgan School, you're totally right. That There is no excuse for that. Uh, uh, and I think for Dunahue School, there's an inner park, there's a smaller park inside that, again, I agree with you, you're right. Um, but yeah, for those, um, there is no excuse. You're correct. But the, the larger ones, the ones that have the parks attached to them, those are a different argument. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilor Devine. Yeah, Alicia, um, where are we at? If I'm if I'm adding all these things up, we're we need to make some changes. Well, we're, yeah. Well, and we're not even through. <laughs> exactly. So do you know where we're at? What we're? Yeah. So you're in the. Uh, if you see this red uh, negative five seventy one four forty. That's what I negative. had. That's what I had. Yeah. Okay. So just, yeah. just just to finish up then. So you're you're over budget. Yep. Yeah. So just just to finish up, I would then propose uh, the package uh, agreeing with the mayor, CAC, OCD, and uh, the remaining ones, the uh, YMCA, River Valley Counseling. Uh, uh, so we got. Yeah, counseling you, center. So you would agree with? Yeah, so you'd like to propose zero, zero on zero, those zero and on continue those. the discussion on these other ones? Yeah, and then figure out. Uh, yeah, could, could you? Um, All right, so we're we're currently still at the Holyoke Public Schools inclusive playgrounds at McMahon and Morgan. Um, the proposal is since we are way over budget already to propose that zero dollars go to the Holyoke YMCA for their. It's the next one yep. after Holyoke Public Schools. And then the next one after that is really River Valley Counseling Center. The proposal would be to put that at zero as well. Yeah, yeah. So we can double back and focus on where we want to cut from these other proposals. Can I get a second on that? Second. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're over by 500 and something. 571,440. Nice. So I'll go back and propose zeroing out the demolition uh, Having said everything I did about the blighted properties, uh, we do need every dime we can get, but 88, we need a million dollars. Uh, the 88,000 is a drop in the bucket mm. at this point. Okay. So you drop that to zero? zero? Yeah, the proposal is for this uh, clearance Second. and demolition at zeros. Okay, and then um, we were at zero for Greater Holyoke, I mean, Greater Springfield mm -hmm. Habitat. We were at 350. We had upped it for homeowner rehab. Do we want to reconsider that? I would, because I don't know where else we're going to get the money. Because so, if we want to keep Morgan and get that fixed. So the original proposal there from um, CAC was 350. from CAC was um, 193.895 to do at least 30 grants of up to thirty thousand dollars. Do we want to get closer to something like that here? Why don't we fund, prioritize what, what we really want to fund? I mean, we'd like to fund everything, but fund. Okay. And make sure. Why don't we go back to what we really want to fund, which is, I'm assuming, the Holy Public Schools, right? That was one. Mm -hmm. um, Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec, correct. And so, and then whatever is left over, we put into the um, the, the SHIP program. Okay. Don't forget the fire fight. Uh, well, that, that was, would, yeah. So really, we're, we were collectively looking at prioritizing those four things. And then going whatever is left over. So, for clarification, yes. 
We're looking at prioritizing the Office for Community Development or the SHIP program, the Holyoke Fire Department installation of smoke and carbon monoxide detectors, Parks and Rec Department project at, Springfield, at Springdale Park, and the Holyoke Public Schools Inclusive pr Playgrounds projects. So that's so we've narrowed it down to four. Is that correct? Are we all in agreement there? There's four, right? Yeah, so, uh, um, so the school. Go, go from the top down. Oh, so, the top down. So zero, zero. What about office community development? Yep, the ship, have? the ship program. Is that zero. Um, no, that we're going to go back to that. So we're going to work with these three, fund these three, and whatever is left over goes into okay. ship, right? I'll, I'll wait to, can, we're just going to talk about these four okay. as our priorities and figure out how to distribute. Gotcha. So and those one, four are two. So it's the fire department, the, the fire department, parks and rec, <coughs> parks and rec public schools, schools, and the um, ship, ship program, office for uh, for community development. Okay. So do we have a number on the ship program? It's currently at three fifty. So right now we want to talk about lowering that possibly. And my proposal would so, be to take it back to the 193.895. Alicia? She's next. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be my proposal is 193.895 for the Office of Com for Community Development Second. SHIP program. Um, Alicia? What I was going to say is um, even if you zero out the SHIP program and zero out the fire department, yeah, You're still, still going to be off right. by um, about 80, 70 some odd thousand dollars. Um, and then if you split the difference um, between Springdale and the, the Morgan playground, we probably could eke out um, once projects get completed this year in the CDBG program, we got, probably could eke out enough money to bring those to Four hundred thousand and four seventy-seven, um, but that would mean zero funding. That would mean zeroing out the, all the other projects. Correct. Yep. So okay. if I may, dem if I may, just demonstrate what that would look like. Sure. Um, so you're off uh, in this case with funding Springdale and funding the playground at Morgan. Um, you're off by seventy-seven thousand. We probably, with projects coming in under budget towards the end of the year, we probably could eke out an additional um, 77,000 somewhere to make sure that those are both funded at 400 and 477. Thanks for that, Alicia. If, that, if that's at all helpful. The other place, if I may, um, to point out is you cannot increase the level of funding to public services um because that's statutorily capped we set up the spreadsheet for you where we're assuming that all of the reviewers would like to allocate 15 percent of the annual allocation to those public services however if you look here at the spreadsheet mm -hmm. um ocd mm -hmm. actually recommended funding and uh, funding this non-public service column at a slightly higher level than the seven seven hundred ninety nine thousand, and that's because we actually recommended this year not funding our public services at a fifteen percent level, and so that is something I don't want to like create more chaos for you, but that is something for you to consider that you move seventy seven thousand from public services up to these non public service that. categories. In fact, that's what we did this year is we yes. moved about. We're recommending. We thought that the non-public services were so important that we're actually recommending to the mayor that you put an additional $66,000 into this column up here. But again, I, I, I'm confident that if you all decided to go this route um, and fund these two large projects that we would, you know, we do everything we can to identify the, identify the the shortfall, and I'd also point out that the shortfall for each project would be roughly thirty-six thousand dollars or so, um, and I'm, I, I think we could find it. So, if that's helpful, thanks, Alicia. Yeah, I think it's very helpful, and um, this is what grant reviews look like. So we just have to dig it out a little. Um, we've prioritized four projects. Um, I feel more, I feel more confident about the SHIP program, fire department, and Springdale Park 
specifically because those benefit the entire community. As much as I love the idea of new parks at two schools, I think the kids are really important, but um, it has been pointed out to me recently that Holyoke has more public parks than most cities, and they're mostly in pretty nice shape and have a lot of stuff going on. So um, I feel strongly personally about Springdale. I feel strongly about the SHIP program. Um, I am curious about what this body would like to do because we still have a some more coming. Yeah. 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 And, and, and let's not forget that at the end of the day, I mean, the, the person who has the last say. <laughs> right. It's a mayor. Come here. Yeah. So, so I, as, as much as I want to see the, the Morgan School and McMahon School things go forward, I, I think the responsibility has to be put where it belongs with the school department. Yeah. I think that's right. reasonable. Yeah. And and we as counselors are now our radar our, our radar alarms have gone off. Uh -huh. yeah. So yeah. let's move this along. And city council should be taking care of that. Yeah. So how do we feel about full Springdale Park um, and full fire department? Alicia, where does the so that puts us at four fifty five with how much left? If we fund, fully fund Parks and Rec and the fire department? Um, so if you, and so are you zeroing out then, if we're playing with this, are we zeroing out the public schools? Yes, ma'am. Yep. yep. Okay. And then, um, so now you're at a negative $5,000. So oh, that fire, sounds much fire better. Department. So um, you could adjust. The fire department. Yeah, just, yeah. Let's see, we adjust this. See what we do. Where does that get us? So does does that leave us at three fifty for the ship program? It. I have three fifty at the ship program. Um, let me give you five fifty. Oh, let's see, fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Fifty thousand minus five. So then this would be forty nine. Um, forty nine. That's going to go to forty. Forty nine. Forty nine. Ninety five. Ninety five. And that gets you right right to zero. So you would do homeowner rehab at 350, installation of smoke detectors at 49,595, and Springdale Park at 400. Right. So I have one more scenario to, to figure out. Come on, bear with me here. Um, if we put ship at 193, kept fire department, Kept parks and rec. Does that leave us enough to do the three ten for public the Holyoke public schools? No. No. Mm -mm. Or anything close? Nope. Nope. Two, you have to do the whole six. No. To, yeah. No. It leaves us at what two something for the public. You schools? get about one fifty six. Oh. All right. Um, Councilor Ocasio. Remember, these are not final decisions. <laughs> These are recommendations. So, yeah, because I'm, I'm still gonna fight for the Morgan School um, mm -hmm. playground because it's falling apart, and they need to something has to give. I mean, you guys can go down there and check it out yourself. Exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we if you guys can get the money together, but so, put a band aid on it, but something has to it needs to be fixed like yesterday. Mm -hmm. That piece that I'm talking about. Because a, a child is going to get hurt, and you guys mark my word on that. Just for clarification, but I'll, I'll have just to, to just to make it really like, just to share the information that we don't have a whole lot of control over this, and it looks like our our mayor has would like to allocate three ten for McMahon specifically, so that still doesn't address Morgan. So just know that as we make these recommendations, we're not the final say. And we're not voting against doing things in the public school. We're talking about where we feel that money should come from. So we all agree that the projects are important, but we just feel like this isn't the place to get the money from for these projects. And we are sort of in disagreement with the mayor about it, too. We feel like this money should come from the school department. And if it has to come from the city, we need to, as a city, put it in the budget so that Parks and Rec is taking care of these. And we're up for budget season, like, like tomorrow, anyway. So. I understand what <laughs> Mike is saying. And uh, just a moment, Councilor Rivera has had his hand up, too. Councilor Rivera? Yes, uh, I, I, I echo Carmen's sentiment. 
with regards to the, the mortgage part. Um, but I also hear the argument with regards to HPS having to take care of their own. Um, there, there's um, the piece with, with the McMahon piece. Um, again, it's, it's not the same with Morgan. There, there's two different issues. Um, it would be nice for the park to be able to be allotted a budget to maintain, but they don't have, it, we're, it, it don't work like that. The, the part, like we've gotten to a point in parks that we rely on CDBG to literally improve our parks. Mm -hmm. We don't have budget to improve the parks. So it, it, any improvement that's going to go to any park in this city is either going to come from CDBG or CPA. That's it. We don't have wiggle room. We don't have the luxury that Chicopee, South Halley and other communities have to invest in their own community with regards to their own funding. A lot of the funding that has invested in our parks, especially in the lower wards, has come from federal funding. Um, so ultimately, I, I, I understand the, the, the argument with regards to the schools maintaining their own, um, but I would say that that should not extend to the parks that we maintain as a city. Um, it's, it's, it's a struggle every time CDBG comes around because this happens, right? a million different people asking for money, um, and we only have a limited amount of money. Um, but I think the real reason why I raised my hand was because I needed an explanation on SHIP. Is that is that the new NIP or our NIP? It will be. So it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be a version of the old neighborhood improvement program, um, but it will, it will not, One Holyoke did not apply for funding and we know that we have waiting lists and we get calls every single day from homeowners. So that's why the office put um, the proposal in. So yeah. capacity wise, and now I have questions about that because I know how much of a headache it was for One Holyoke when I worked yep. there. Um, and I know that not everybody qualifies for that. So yep. the capacity wise, um, do we have what it takes to run that operation out of the office of the city, out of community development? So that, that's a great question, Councilor Rivera. And um, capacity-wise for running these homeowner rehab programs is really challenging because there are income restrictions, there are environmental restrictions, there are procurement restrictions, um, there are affordability restrictions, there's housing conditions. It's a really, really complicated process. Um, and so one of the things that we did talk about in the CAC meeting at length was what does it take capacity wise to stand up this program and then operate the program and what amount of money makes that worthwhile? There were some members at the CSA meeting who were looking to fund it at maybe 50, 60, 100,000. And it's not worth the time and effort to stand up a program for that small of uh, level of funding. I, my thought process with how we would actually administer the program and, the, and what kind of capacity um, we would bring on is probably a temp, temporary type employee, not even an employee really, um, through a temp agency, someone that has building experience, some uh, maybe lending or loan experience, maybe a retired commercial banker would be interested in coming in on a temporary basis because the money's going to go fast. So this isn't a long-term bring on another employee type deal. This is use a, perhaps a little bit of the funding that's allocated or out of the, um, if we had any extra money in our admin budget to bring on somebody on a temporary basis, get the grants out the door, open the grant program, close the grant program and be done. But you're absolutely right. Um, in terms of capacity to operate these programs, the requirements of HUD are getting like, it's crazy. The, the latest, um, and, and while I'm appreciative of HUD funding, I should say that, like we're appreciative of HUD funding, but I think that the folks in DC aren't recognizing what folks on the streets in Holyoke have the kinds of things that we're dealing with. And so for, for instance, one of the latest um, housing rehab requirements is now we need to be looking at radon, not something that we've had to look at before, um, but the level of requirements may very well put these programs out of business because we just don't have the capacity in a city like Holyoke with, with you know, $800,000 to do this. But I also know, and I recognize, there is a dire need. It is a dire need. We don't get phone calls in the office from people wanting playgrounds improved. 
we get phone calls every single day from people who are losing their homes. They're losing their homeowner's insurance. They don't have a roof over their head. They're about to be evicted. And so housing is where it's at. Um, and that's why that's, that's really reflected in our recommendations is um, housing is just critical. Without a roof over, a stable roof over someone's head, they can't hold a job. They can't get access to health care. Um, we don't have a healthy community. Um, and it's just, it's really challenging. But capacity is concerning. I mean, certainly capacity for running these programs is concerning. My hope is that if we're doing it under my roof at room 400, um, that we will have sort of daily hands-on, um, you know, all, all hands-on deck type approach to a program. So and I know that was long-winded, but I, I hear you. <laughs> I think one more question regarding to that. So like, I, cause I know it's very tough to fit into the income brackets. So um, is there any way that we're, that we are able to expand that or expand any of that with regards to, cause with regards to the housing piece, right? Like I, I, and I know, and I know cause when I worked at one whole look, I seen it, there's roofs repairs, there's window repairs, but then if there's other people living in the house, you need to know what how much they're making too as well, because that gets yeah. incorporated and that throws people out of the of the of the yeah. categories. So I think for me it's um if we're gonna be helping with the housing, it's it's literally helping, right? It's not making them go through the whole process of being eliminated from their home. It, there, there, there is a there's a middle piece that we're missing here and not just in this place it's the whole country right um there's the middle and i guess it's the middle class in a sense where they're not getting enough help but they make too much money to get their siding done or to get their windows done or to get their but it, they don't have enough money to go buy that boiler that breaks down all in one shot so they'll have to take out a credit loan so the arnit program what i remember that one actually was beneficial to certain people where it was a low cost interest loan to make improvements on your home um, to anyone, to in a sense, to my understanding, I could be wrong, Alicia. So, um, so our the motto in our office uh, when we're working with whether it's small business owners or um, owners who need assistance is we want to screen people in and not screen people out. So our goal is to serve as many families and households as possible. Um, so we're, we're, we try to be as creative as we can to get folks into the program and not, not out of the program. We, we want as many customers um, as possible. However, that being said, we have statutory and regulatory obligations to HUD that we cannot waive. And so one of those is around income limits. HUD sets the income limits. Um, they are set at 80% median income. The limits have actually gone up. Um, so, for instance, a household of four, um, the income limit for a household of four, if if we're able to serve them, that income limit is now seventy nine thousand seven hundred one dollars. Um, so the income limits are a little more generous than they used to be. Um, Eighty percent area median income is going up because which means we can serve more people because the area median income is going up. And we are in the Springfield Metropolitan Statistical Area, so that when we're calculating median income or HUD's calculating median income, they're also including me incomes in Longmeadow. So that helps us in Holyoke because that bumps up our eligibility and our household incomes. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you're absolutely right in terms of the paperwork um, that we require from homeowners. I would be the first one to stand up and say, it's a bureaucratic, burdensome process. But it's like that because of the requirements that HUD imposes on us to ensure that the funding goes to families who meet the statutory requirements um, for income. We try to try to help folks overcome those barriers. We will meet with them. We have sent employees and, and you know from One Holyoke, they will go to their homes and try to work with them on that. Um, we try to take down as many barriers as possible. I recently had a case in the last couple of weeks where I got a call that an elderly woman had had no heat in her house um, for the last few months and was in a really bad situation. We, we sent people to her home to help her with the paperwork. Um, so we don't want paperwork to be a barrier ever, but there are statutory requirements that I can't waive, the city can't waive. Um, there's just no choice there. 
In terms of household income and how it's calculated, again, we have to use um, the federal regulations, which means that everyone that's living in the household does get counted regardless of relationship. So if you have um, a group of roommates living together, we're gonna have to look at the entirety of the household's income. Your reference to the grants, um, we were able to assist some homeowners with grants and do it through the Rental Neighborhood Improvement Program because those were mom and pop type landlords. So it was an owner occupied rental property where the owner lived in the property but also had rental units. And so that's why we were able to provide them with grants, low interest grants, or I'm sorry, low, excuse me, low interest loans to get that done. But that's because it's rental property and 51% of the units in that rental property were occupied by low and moderate income residents. So we still had the low and moderate income um, piece going on. We are, for anybody that's over income, we are providing referrals to other services. So there's money out there if someone's a veteran, we can connect them with a veterans organization that may be able to help um, with homeowners, home rehab if they're over income for us. If someone is over income, we try to hook them up with mass housing. They have some special low interest loan programs. Um, so we don't just, we really try hard not to say no. And if we have to say no, then we try to provide someone with um, other kinds of resources. Thank you. I just wanted to point that out because I know that, the, so you said 79,000 for a family of four. If, if if yes. two married couple uh, are both making 50 grand, they don't qualify. And, and, right. and that's not even a lot. 50 grand is not even a lot. So that, that like, yes. I just wanted to like put the contextual background of how hard it is for someone to actually, it, it's good though for, for the seniors and the people that do qualify, but it's yep. just that for me, I feel like if we're looking at the demographic of the homeowners that are applying, there's probably a small percentage that actually do qualify for the dollars that are there. It's good to have money in there and that 350 to 400 mark looks like it's, it's, it's right to me. But at the end of the day, I don't run the department. That's on you guys. <laughs> but thank you guys. For thank you, Patrick. And, and, and if I may, you really, you did a great job explaining why McMahon School qualifies. Um, you hit that right on the head. You hit it right on the head. And the only thing that I would add is that it, it, it isn't based on um, race or ethnicity, but it is based on the percentage of children who are low income. And it happens that at McMahon, it's 77.9%. But you got, you got it. You can, anytime you want this job. <laughs> I'm working on it for when I <laughs> Thank retire. Thank you, Alicia. And thank you, Counselor. There we go. Uh, Counselor Devine. Um, we have that, I think Councilor Sullivan's correct, this Morgan playground is a responsibility, in my opinion, of the schools. I don't think it's, I mean, it would be nice if the city would do it, but I think because we have Councilor Graney, Councilor Jordan, and Councilor Murphy Rambaletti file an order, have them go take a look at it, have them meet with the school committee. Um, but to me, that's, that's where that should be laid mm -hmm. on, on their laps to get it done ASAP. So, uh, Councillor Sullivan. Good night. I, I think we're ready to, I, I hope we're ready to vote. I, I would like to. Uh, can, I, can I get a motion? So the, the motion would be for 350 for the SHIP program, 49,595 for the uh, fire department for the uh, carbon monoxide detectors and 400,000 for Springdale Park. I will second that. For a total of 799,595. Well, before you second, what was the last one you were gonna say? You went to 400,000 and then I didn't hear the rest. The balance. For, which for, a, total, for a total of 799,595. Seven, I second that. All right, a motion has been made and seconded. Um, and that would be for our proposal 350,000 to the ship program, 400,000 to Parks and Rec, and 49595 to Holyoke Fire Department. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next, no. <laughs> Is that anonymous? Or unanimous, sorry. Yep. Where's my sheet? All right. Great. I only took a little bit. Yeah, so let's keep in mind that we do not have the final say and these are just recommendations. 
Nope. This one's going to be. All right. So moving on to requests for public service proposals, we have a budget of $184,522 and a request requests for $427,031. So please keep that in mind. Um, and I will just go over quickly what was recommended in the in the committee I went to, the Citizens Advisory Committee meeting I went to, and go over what was proposed um, by OCD and the mayor. So starting at the first public service proposal from for Homework House, requested was fifteen thousand. OCD um, proposed zero. The CAC. Proposed fifteen thousand, and the mayor proposed ten. The Holyoke Boys and Girls Program. The request was for twenty thousand. OCD proposed zero. CAC proposed twenty thousand. The mayor proposed ten. Girls Inc. The request was for fifteen thousand. OCD proposed zero. CAC proposed fifteen. The mayor proposed zero. Holyoke Safe Neighborhood Program back to school event. Um, 5000 was requested and proposed across the board. The YWCA Holyoke Young Parent Program Furnishings, request for, for 10920. OCD proposed zero, the mayor proposed zero, CAC proposed 10920 full funding. Holyoke Parks and uh, Parks Department requested scholarships for youth sports leagues. 15,000 was requested. Zero was proposed by OCD and CAC. The mayor proposed 10,000. In La Se de Familias, Youth Commission proposal was for 62,000. Uh, there was a zero um, proposal across the board from the other um, committees and the mayor. Uh, Western Mass Elder Care requested 20,000 for meal delivery and received a recommendation of 20,000 across the board. CHD um, requested 54,200 for an elder wellness program. Zero was proposed across the board. Care Center requested a Bright Futures project for 40,000. Zero was um, proposed from OCD and CAC, and 10,000 was proposed by the mayor. Holyoke Police Department requested 30,000 for their drop in center rent. OCD proposed zero, CAC proposed zero, mayor um, proposed full funding for that at 30,000. Providence <laughs> Ministries for the needy, uh, for Margaret's Pantry Food and Kate's Kitchen. The pro we good? Yeah. The proposal was for forty thousand, or the request was for forty thousand for the food uh, for Margaret's pantry, and twenty five thousand for Kate's from Kate's kitchen. Um, the OCD and CAC proposals were forty and twenty five, and the mayor proposed forty thousand and twenty thousand. Yes, please. Let's wait. Alianza. <laughs> Alianza requested 16,000 for domestic violence intervention. OCD proposed zero. Uh, CAC proposed 16,000 full funding, and the mayor proposed full funding. Um, the Greater Holyoke Chamber for the Holyoke uh, for the farmers market requested 25,000. They were proposed 25,000 from OCD, 17,602 from CAC, and 10,522 from the mayor. United Way of Pioneer Valley asked for 3,000. OCD proposed three, CAC proposed zero, the mayor proposed three, and Wayfinders requested residential services for affordable housing tenants at 30,911 and received zero funding proposal across the board. Now, let's go back to the beginning. Public services, youth. <laughs> for after school tutoring and mentoring. So, Sure. Um, homework House, I, I've been in, involved uh, helping raise money for them and uh, watching the programs that they run. And uh, it's just been a tremendous program year after year after year after year. Mm -hmm. I would recommend full, full funding on their request. Mm. For 15000 Yeah. Second. All right. Any discussion otherwise? Okay, so I'm going to put in our proposal at 15 for now. 
uh, Holyoke Boys and Girls Program, Public Housing Youth Programs. Um, the request was for twenty thousand. Um, CAC proposed twenty thousand. I was in that meeting. Um, OCD proposed zero. The mayor proposed that at half funding at ten. Any discussion? I'd keep it the same. I'd same as what? Ten. What the mayor proposed. Second. All right. Any discussion? My hand is raised, if I can. Oh, sorry. Councilor Rivera. Thank you. Uh, uh, I was First, I was going to say Homer House is a great program. I second Councilor Sullivan's um, advocation for it. Um, but I have a question on the Boys and Girls Club housing youth programs. If Alicia can kind of clear it up a little bit. Are we saying that these are the satellite units? Yes. Alicia. Let me um, let me pull up their application, um, make sure we're, we're as accurate as possible. So if anyone's following along um, at home, it's on page 95 of the proposal book. <clears throat> And I asked the question because I, I, I grew up in the housing and, and, and I attended those units specifically. I never went to the Cosmo Way one until I was older. I grew up in the Tepper Apartments unit. So, um, go ahead. I'm sorry, Councilor, go ahead. No, you go ahead, go ahead. It's um, the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Holyoke are requesting investment in the club's satellite programs located in housing authority communities of Topford, Bowden Village, Churchill, and Lyman. Yeah. So thank you for so that. So it's the contact. satellites. Yeah, so the satellite units, just for context, again, Boys and Girls Club Kid, I grew up there, worked there. Um, I worked at all the facilities, every single one, uh, whichever one you want to name. Um, the satellite units get the least amount of funding appropriated to them out of all the all, out of the Boys and Girls Club. The central um, Co Co Nick Cosmos Way um, facility is the main facility. The, uh, the satellite units pick up whatever... It, is kind of left over in a sense, unless someone specifically dedicates funding to those units. Um, so for example, if I donate $500, uh, my $500 will go directly to Nick Cosmo's way. If I say I want to donate $500 to Tefert unit, then then it would go to Tefert unit. Um, again, just providing some context behind so if you're, I know the Boys and Girls Club receives tons of funding, but when you're you're talking about the satellite unit, it's a total separate program and total separate demographic. Yes, all the kids eventually end up at the Central Club, but for the kids that don't have transportation from Bowdoin Village, from Tefford, and from, I think it's Churchill, um, uh, for the time being, until they get to 13, 14 age, this is the space for them to run their programming for the Boys and Girls Club. So again, just giving some background information on the programs that I'm familiar with. Thank you, Councillor, and um, thank you, Alicia. So um, public housing youth programs, with that insight, um, is there any other discussion? And um, did we want to leave the recommendation at 10, or did you want to reconsider? Councillor Sullivan? I'm fine with the 10 still. OK. Um, then for Girls Inc, we had a request for fifteen thousand, and proposals for zero, fifteen, and zero. Any discussion on that? I'd I'd be at a zero on that. I think we gave them some money this year also out of um, CPA. Hmm. I think on their building also. They yeah they just got into a new building. They did a lot of um, repairs. Um, Alicia, can you remind us what this uh, $15,000 request is for? This request is for their, um, it's basically like an after school and summer programming for girls. Uh, I believe this is their STEM based activity, but let's um, make sure that we're accurate. Um, that would be page 104 in the proposal book. And let me just flip to that for you. So um, the scope of the activity, we are expanding the dosage of our year-round center-based, no-cost after-school programming for Holyoke youth 
ages five to 18. Our programs integrate engaging hands on activity with curricula covering healthy living, academic endowment, academic enrichment and support and life skills. During the school year, we will provide after school programming three hours per day, five days per week for at least 45 Holyoke Elementary and teen young people. Um, we will also continue to serve Holyoke youth with three weeks of full day camp serving 35 Holyoke youth, our Eureka STEM program in partnership with UMass and through our school-based programs. Thank you. Um, so in the CAC meeting, we talked a lot uh, about just Girls Inc. and all the programming they're doing. I'm in support of this, but I can understand um, feeling like the funding needs to go elsewhere considering how much funding they've gotten recently, but it's from different sources and they're applying for it separately, so I think we should keep that in mind too. Um, so is it, do I have a proposal for Girls Inc.? Well, a question, one more for Alicia. What's the total um, amount of this program that they run? What portion of it are they asking for from CDBG? Let me take a quick peek at their budget for you, Counselor. Yeah. Um, according to their budget, So they're asking for um, 12,000 towards salaried positions uh, to operate these programs. And so it's a $15,000. So it looks like they're asking for $12,000 for salaried positions for assistant program director, program facilitators, and program admin assistants, as well as the fringes for those positions. Okay. Thank you. How do we feel now? I'm I'm at a zero. You had a zero. I'm at a zero. All right, zero it is. How about our Holyoke Safe Neighborhood Back to School event? Um, it looks like the recommendation was five across. Do we want to? Five across. We want to yep. agree. Okay, that makes that That's one a easy. Program. Yeah, it is. Um, Holyoke Young Parent Program Furnishings. Um, it's my under well, from what I understood, these are actually uh, furniture for young parents in, in new apartments, and so they get there and the apartment's furnished. They don't get to keep the furniture, but the apartment is furnished with these items that stay there. And um, I don't know, I was definitely for this when we had the discussions in CAC, um, but I am obviously available to for discussion, yes. I had a question. Is, okay. is this for um, the apartments that are home based? This is for individual apartments for families. Yeah. To furnish the it's apartments. It's a shelter. It's it's for a shelter location. Okay. Shelter. And uh, Alicia, the YWCA is running shelter now. Yes, it is a uh, it's an eleven bed residential program for youth ages thirteen to twenty two who are pregnant or parenting. So it's not as if we're furnishing apartments uh, for young people. It is a residential program that will be furnished if, if this was funded or would have new furnishings. Thank you. What's the will of the body? I'll say zero. Sure. Zero. Oh. Zero. Okay. Holyoke Parks Department scholarship for youth sports leagues. Um, the request for for fifteen thousand. We had zero at OCD from OCD and CAC. The mayor um, proposed ten thousand. Um, I would just like to add that from the conversations I was a part of here, it was my understanding that in the previous year no youth scholarships were granted or close to zero. Um, so. When we had this discussion, we felt like we why bother funding something that doesn't get used? But um, is that correct, Alicia? Um, to be to be fair to the Parks Department, this has been one of those cases of a capacity issue in trying to get the program launched. 
Mm, um, so it is true that as of the date of the CAC meeting, no, no funds from last year's allocation had been expended. But yeah. um, I think it's more along the lines of getting the program set up in capacity to administer it. And I have, I have been in contact with Tom Reynolds, and we're hoping that we would be able to do some of those scholarships for spring sports. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't say... I wouldn't say that it's accurate to say that there has been no need or folks haven't taken advantage of it. It's really been more of an internal department capacity issue um, between our two departments. So. so the program hasn't existed because no one's been able to run it, basically. Correct. Okay. Correct. We just so have, even we if there is a need, that. we wouldn't know because there's no application. Correct. <laughs> okay. Yeah, good. that's true. We, we think there's a need. Um, you know, the Parks Department has anecdotally heard from parents who are not able to uh, afford scholarship fee or uh, league fees um but until those applications actually are made public we're not gonna we're not gonna know for certain so thank you i just Thanks. i just want to be as accurate and transparent with that as possible no that's very helpful uh, Councillor sullivan so um all, all the uh, past problems aside I, I see a lot of opportunity now to get things going we, we have uh, Pedro Rivera and uh, some of the other guys out there now with the uh, Hoyoke Wolfpack AAU program, Paper City Soccer program, uh, Paper City Basketball program, Hoyoke Youth Football. Um, we, we have new people on the Parks and Rec Commission, John Moquin that's uh, doing a fantastic job. Um, uh, I'd like to see Mr. Reynolds get the chance uh, really to have some resources available and see what they can do. I, I'd, I'd like to see them get the whole 15,000. Second. Hmm. All right, any more discussion? 15 it is, for now. <laughs> In Lassiter Familia, Youth Commission. I've been Youth follow the trend, it's at zero, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so. As much as I would love to help, you know, the, it's zero across the board. So. Yeah, so requested was 62000 That's a, um, a big request for such a small budget. I mean, that's like a third of the, the budget we had to work with for public service youth. So are we all fine with the zero there? Yep. Okay. Western Mass Elder Care for meal delivery, yep. 20 across the board? I yeah. would say, yeah, I, I actually help out. I, I actually go on soon. with them yep, on drives. Okay. Deliver meals. 20 for that. Uh, CHD Holyoke Elder zero. Wellness Program zero. Yeah, their request was for fifty four two, and I just feel I personally felt like there's other programs that fill these needs in Holyoke. Yeah. So, um, any more discussion on that? Nope. All right. Um, the Care Center Bright Futures Project. That's a good program. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I, it was too. Um, so OCD and CAC gave zero. Um, I definitely good. was in favor of granting some funding for this. Looks like the mayor put in request for 10. How do we feel about this one? I would say 10. Second. 10. All right. Mm -hmm. Look at us cruising right along. Holyoke Police Department, community drop-in center rent. Um, the request was for a 30,000. OCD and CAC um, proposed zero. The mayor proposed 30. Um, in the CAC conversations, um, I the what my impression was that we didn't feel like uh, CDBG funds should be going towards rent, and since mm -hmm. the police department has other sources of financing and rights grants as well, that they probably could find this money elsewhere. So that was just the general idea. Um, any discussion? I would say zero. I, I would agree with that. Yep. Zero? I, I had a question. My other, you know, it's, 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 um, if, if it shouldn't be used for rent, then why is the mayor putting it in for rent? Um, but um, He may still put it in. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, it's just our recommend. Um, so, that's all I wanted to say. Okay. And um, uh, Councilor Ocasio, you wanted to mention something? I have a question. Um, what's the... Community right. drop in center. Exactly. Let me explain. Yeah, what was, what that it's is? the Race Street it's Social Race Street. Work Project. Oh, sorry. So I've I've been there, if you don't mind. Please. So I've been there. It's um I walked upon it accidentally. I was um touring the, the steam building that's located on Race Street. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, what's this? And I, you know, it said the name and everything. I had a camera. I knocked on the door to see if anyone was there. And one person came up and it just seemed very like not uninviting. And so when I look at the name of it, Community Drop-In Center, how many people even know about it? I walked upon it by accident. I didn't know about it. Now, I don't, I, I'm glad that it exists, but the 30,000, I agree. There, there should, money should come from somewhere. And, there sh and I'm sure the, the police department, they're great at finding grants and resources to pay for this rent. And it shouldn't come from C, D, um, CBDD. Yeah. Like, I'd rather see. I'd rather see money like this go to Girls Inc. than rent, yeah. you know. But, um, but it looks like we have a proposal for, what was the proposal? 30,000. Oh, we, we said From zero. From the body, one. zero. Yes, correct. Are we okay with that? Yep. All right. That's okay. I don't mind being outnumbered. All right. Um, Providence Ministries for the Needy. Looks like um, near near full funding across the board. Um, again, my only argument against this is that they also have a giant endowment and um, I, I wonder about how much they need this from this funding source, but, you know, clearly that no one agrees with me on that. So is that proposal for zero? Sorry, Councillor Sullivan. I, I, I would go the full 40 and 25 myself. Okay. Yeah. 20, you mean? Well, the oh, full, the the full was yeah. okay. 25, yeah. So 40 and 25. Yeah. Yep. All right, Alianza domestic violence intervention, um, 16 across with the exception 16. of OCD. Question for Alicia. Mm -hmm. uh, have they ever gotten funded, gotten funded? All right, let me Full get funding? Straight. Received funding <laughs> in, the, in the past. You can say it right <laughs> Yes, uh, Alianza has received um, CDBG funds almost every year on an annual basis. Um, I'd have to double check that, but they are regular recipients of funds. They received ARPA funds and they also received CDBG CV funds. So yes, they are regular recipients of, of funding through our office. Okay. Thank you both. So we're at 16, are we good with that? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Greater Holyoke Chamber Foundation, Holyoke Farmers Market. I would, I would love. Let's see, we're getting closer. So, we have three left. We didn't spend so like the thirty thousand that we took from the from, right, and we only gave five thousand extra. I think what? Yeah. Fifteen. Yeah. Right, right. So we the after school. So we can probably fully fund. Right. Something. So I'm wondering if we can and look at her numbers that we oh, yeah. Alicia's numbers is at twenty eight five twenty two. So yeah. we still have that in the bucket. So what we have left here mm -hmm. is wayfinders where I am going to say zero to mm -hmm. <laughs> right off the bat. So um, let's stick with Holyoke Farmers Market. Are you proposing a full funding of that? Yes. OK. So anybody else? I I argue against that. It, it seems to me that that's gotten smaller and smaller and smaller every year because money becomes smaller 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 and it's harder to manage it's well not, it's, it's 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 harder it's harder to manage that i work with them closely i don't look work for them i try to help them get the word out and stuff because it's a great program it really is uh, i'm talking about the number of vendors that actually participate oh, in it yeah. have dwindled 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 um i stumbled on the, I was out on the rail trail and stumbled on the one in East Hampton, which was about 10 times the size of the one we run here in Hoyoke yeah. uh, on a fraction. And, and that's uh, the problem, yeah. it's word of mouth and, and people. So there's no community it, support for our farmer's and, market. And it's moved to so many locations, <laughs> try to keep up with getting that, that, that word out. Yeah, that's what they're having issues with. And money is definitely an issue as well. Yeah. and. Uh, the, the chamber also has, you know, other sources of income and can rely on, you know, things through the business community to. Well, we're at, we're at United Way, which is. We're still at the farmer's market. Yeah. No, I'm saying. Okay. They, they want 3000 right? And we have still some left over, I'm, I'm assuming, right? Council yeah, 3522 did, did you have a. 
comment about the farmer's yeah. market? Um, I was with Mike as far as the vendors. Mm -hmm. There's not a, a great deal, but it's possible that, um, you know, with the um, pandemic and stuff, people are still trying to catch up, yeah. you know, so maybe that's why. And East Hampton, I think, has just a lot more farmland than they do in Holyoke, so that's probably why. Yeah. But they, um, they're welcome here anytime to come and sell their produce. Well, I, I, I mean, to Councilor Sullivan's point, and I think these are all really good points, if, if the Holyoke community doesn't support the farmer's market and go and use it, then it doesn't matter how much money it has. Um, we can promote it more. I feel like they're they do a lot to promote it. It is a regular market. It does have it's it's consistent. Um, the summer market definitely does better than the winter market. Um, I'm, I imagine that they're hoping that some of this funding could probably be used to get more different vendors or I don't know. But um, so what about twenty? I mean, I'm just writing down numbers that you guys suggest. <laughs> So the mayor suggested 10.522, CAC suggested 17.602, OCD recommended 25. You thinking 15? Yeah, I think that would be How's fair. that sound? Yeah, 15. Yeah. 15? Yep. All right, and we're at um, we still Pioneer Valley, yeah. Way, um, United Way Food Pantry. Um, are we interested in 3,000? <sighs> Are we interested in this? Is really what it says? Cooking demonstration? Yeah. yeah, it's exactly what it is. Yeah, and in the Pioneer Valley United Way, which runs all its own so they do, yeah. campaigns and stuff. I, yeah. They do I'm healthy hearing, eating. I'm hearing very big so they do demonstrations yeah. with what Where? the um, I believe it. I want to say that it's at the yeah. HCC Culinary Center. Oh, all right, okay. I believe it's there. I think I've definitely seen some food demonstrations there. I don't know. I who believe it's the HCC Culinary. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so are we thinking zero? I'm thinking zero. For, for, I for United Way of Pioneer Valley. Valley. Um, well, what would you all like to put? I heard a zero. I heard, I said 3,000, but that was I'm indifferent. rebutted. Yeah, I'm indifferent, too, on it. Zero? I'm at zero. Zero? Yeah, okay. All right. Wayfinders. Look at that. We made money here. Thirteen thousand five hundred twenty. No, we didn't. We gonna redistribute that. Redistribute. Wayfinders zero. Uh yeah. Okay. Let's go back. Um, we got thirteen five two two left. Is that correct, Alicia? Yep. All right. So. Yep. That's what it looks like. Woohoo. What are we thinking? I think that a young parents program for 13 to 22 year olds in a shelter needs furniture, but that's just me. <laughs> How much furniture can you buy with that? 10,000? Apparently enough, because that's all they ask for. Mm -hmm. they're, I think they're just if buying you like, yeah. shelves, you know, and cabinet, like dressers and stuff. Bureaus. I remember. Bureaus. What's in there? Bureaus. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, can we go to. Um, it can go wherever we like. And lots of the family, I don't know if, oh, they, yeah. if they got, still got furniture. I mean, they can. Well, so they requested for a youth commission specifically. So, oh, so yeah. giving them a little bit it's for, it work. won't, yeah, that doesn't work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They want 62. She said no. <laughs> um, any other way you'd like to redistribute this? Um, well, let's reevaluate. We have the care center that we, we had a little discussion about. Um, oh. The Boys and Girls Youth Programs um, for Holyoke Boys and Girls Club. Did we fund the... Um, I mean, we could fully fund the, 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 the youth, Boys and Girls. The, no, the um, the leagues. We fully funded, right? What leagues? We did. The Holyoke Parks Department. The oh, super, yeah. The scholarships. Oh, yeah, we yeah. Yeah. That yeah. The sports mm -hmm. leagues. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that was fully funded. Um, meal delivery was fully funded. Care Center. Bright Futures, I mean, 10,000 is what we, I mean, have you ever been to one of their graduations? I've been to so far to three of them. They hold them at the Wisteria Hearst Museum. And some of the stories that these young ladies, when they go up there, young mothers, when they go up there, is very compelling. Um, I'm sorry. The care center? Yeah, the care center. I should, I, 
I've been to a few of the graduations there and some of the stories that these young mothers go up to tell is very compelling of the work that the care center provides to the, the, the young women in, in this community and surrounding communities, not just Holyoke, yeah. you know, and it's, it's really making an impact. Yeah, I've never been there, but I, I spoke to a few of the, the ladies, the young ladies that go there and, um, and so far, everybody that I talked to about it, they, this is a good program for, for them, so $40,000. I've heard. Well, we have 13, an extra 13, 13. so we could throw Can we go back to there. the bottom, Alicia? You have 13,522. So we could put this at. Oops. Uh, Sorry. So we could put this at 23,532 or whatever that number was. Yeah. You want to throw the rest on the care center? Any discussion? Well, wait a minute. I mean, wait, 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 wait. yeah, let's double check. So the care center was one. Let's highlight that one. Care center, <laughs> that's, right? That's what grant money's for. Getting rid of it. And Give it out, people. <laughs> Give it away. They got fully funded. <laughs> um, that was zero. <clears throat> that's fully funded. I, I think the care center... Yeah. 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 The Kirsten has been there for like oh, for yeah. a very yeah, a yeah. very long time. All right, let's put that pile on the care center, Alicia. And I think that brings it up to what, fifteen? I don't know. You're see. at zero. Great. All right, great. What is that final nice. number? Twenty three for twenty three five twenty two. Twenty three five twenty two. For care center. Awesome. Do we got more? I think that's it. Oh my nope, god. No, you have one more you have one no, more we section. Have one more. Where is that? Let's if I could oh, just sorry. do a run. If I could just do a rundown to make sure that we've got all of these um, correctly. I've got the homework, Let's scroll up. Um, Are you starting? Homework house at, homework house at 15,000, yep. Boys and Girls Club at 10, yep. Girls Inc. at zero, Holyoke Safe Neighborhood at 5,000, the Y at zero, Holyoke Parks at 15, and Lasse at zero, Western Mass Elder Care at 20, CHD at zero, Care Center at 23,522, Please Drop In at zero, Margaret, Margaret's Pantry at 40, Hate's Kitchen at 25, Domestic Violence Allianz at 16, and the Farmer's Market at 15, zero for United Way Cooking Demonstrations, and zero for Wayfinders. Correct. Correct. I like to I like to make sure I have it on paper. So if something goes completely awry with the laptop tonight, I <laughs> I have this somewhere else. Okay. So the last section um, for you all to make a recommendation on is the admin and planning um, budget, as we discussed in our own That's proposal at the back of your proposal books. Um, the OCD office is not funded with um, municipal funds. It's entirely grant funded. So we do allocate the 20% that HUD's allow, HUD allows us to um, from the program. Typically, we don't use it all, um, and whatever's not used, we roll back into the program the next year. So this year, the request is for 246029. Uh, I'll make a motion mm -hmm. that we approve that. Yep. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, awesome. So I would like to make a motion that we approve this evening's uh, recommendations from the DGNR committee to um, Office of Community Development for all these grants. So I will do a memo um, and get it into the city council tomorrow. Thank all you right, all great. so much. I Thank appreciate you. your work. Yeah. All right. Alicia, Alicia, do we have to take another vote? Yeah, I think. Uh, so there's the vote. Um, there's the vote on the resolution that the city council received. Um, basically, it's accepting the grant. Mm -hmm. um, that's the that's the resolution document. So you uh, you vote to accept both the CDBG funds and the home funds, um, and then allow for submission of the annual plan to HUD. Okay, it's not something we have to put forward out of committee tonight. I, I, you know what? Like I should know how you've done this in other years. It's the city council takes a vote on it. So if that okay. needs to come out of the committee, um, then I would ask that you go ahead and take a vote and get that out of committee yeah, so I the council can vote. Because it was a subcommittee meeting. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. So we're, I, I mean, I, 
I'm under the impression we need to have a motion to accept these proposals we just made and send them to full committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yay, thank you, Alicia, you're so awesome. <laughs> and thank you, Attorney Bissonette, for coming. And everyone else who I can barely see here. Any other motions? Do we need to, um, I think I need to entertain a motion to um, recognize that items were laid on the table and will be taken up April 22nd in our next meeting. Second. All in favor? We had something else on the agenda? Yes, ma'am. Which one's the, the, on the table? Mm hmm And what date's gonna be? Uh, I believe our next meeting is April 22nd. April 22nd. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure it's clear to the everyone watching and listening that we're not taking those up. Right. Okay, sure. Right. <laughs> I, I, once again, I don't, unless somebody makes a motion to take them off the table, we don't, they just sit there. Okay, great. So we'll just leave them there. All right. So what do we got to do to get out of here? I'd motion to adjourn. adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Unanimous. All right. Thanks, guys. Good meeting, Have a guys. Good evening. Thank you.